Hello, and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez. Today I want to introduce geologic time. Now we start off by saying that geologists think of time in two ways. The first one is relative time. And relative time deals with the order of events, the sequence of rock units. How can you interpret one being older and the other one being younger? And really it, it relies on some principles of, of just common sense of what you observe. Uh, the other way we think of time is this absolute time. And absolute time is really the, the age of rocks or rock formations in terms of millions of years before present. So millions of years before present. And we sometimes call it the numerical age because here we do add a number. And so obviously to, to get the ages we need the atomic clock and that atomic clock is radioactivity. So recall, recall that radioactivity is, is a spontaneous decay of an unstable atomic nucleus. And it'll always produce an atom, a daughter product, we call it, that'll have a different um, uh, atomic number or number of protons. Another thing to note here is we often use uh, the, the, the symbol MA, and that means millions of years ago, because a, a MA here is for mega, which is 1 times 10 to the 6 years. So when we, when we say something is 100 million years old, 100 MA, it'd be 100 million years. So we usually use MA. Now some of the principles I'll be talking about here for relative dating include uh, superposition, original horizontality, cross-cutting relationships, inclusions, and I'll introduce fossil succession here. But before we actually go to, to the um, principles of relative dating, let's look at uniformitarianism. So this is a very important principle that really is a, 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 an important tool geologists use to help them interpret the past. Because what it relies on, it relies on processes that are occurring today that we can observe where rocks are forming in their specific environment. And when we see those same types of rocks that are much older, that are millions of years old, and we see them in different environments, we can interpret how they formed in the past, right? So um, this principle of uniformitarianism was first proposed by James Hutton in the late 1700s, and he viewed Earth as cyclical in terms of, was, you notice that the rocks up in his native Scotland indicated that marine organisms, that these were once part of an ocean floor, that the rocks were uplifted by some um, mountain building event, and then later erosion would strip them back down and then another episode of mountain building would happen and more erosion. So this mountain building erosion, mountain building erosion, this cyclical pattern. One simple way uh, we can state this principle of uniformitarianism is that the present is key to the past. So observations we make today can be applied to similar structures we see in rocks. So um, in fact here uh, on this PowerPoint I have those pillow basalt lavas we see in San Francisco over by Marin Headlands. So you see the lava structures here. The only place these lavas erupt are at mid-oceanic ridges um, underwater. So here when we look at these, these rocks are far from their mid-oceanic ridge source. So we can interpret these as originating in some specific environment. Um, also, uh, in this next picture here, I have um, some marine chert. So this strata forms in the deep ocean. And, and uh, it, it falls slowly onto the sea floor. And um, when I see these marine cherts and I find fossils in them, there's little planktonic fossils in them, I know the environment of deposition. It must have been in a deep marine setting. Today, these rocks are exposed up at marine headlands. So you can see all the layers. This is across the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, um, uh, again, this principle of uniformitarianism, another thing we could say about it is. Uh, natural processes that govern the universe have remained constant over geologic time. In other words, you, uh, uh, not the law of gravity, uh, the, the um, conservation of energy, all the laws that, that govern our universe have remained constant. Uh, so uh, let's look at the principles of relative dating now. So the first one is this principle of superposition. Now, sometimes it's called the law of superposition. But what we see here is in, in a layered sequence of strata. So these layers are strata, right? Each bed is a, a stratum or a layer. We'll see that the bottom ones should be older and the, young, and the top ones should be younger, just like the Grand Canyon. You look over the edge, older rocks at the bottom, 
younger rocks at the top. However, how do we know that these strata have not been completely turned upside down and where the structures may be um, uh, completely flipped over? And so we're going to use these special, um, these are called sedimentary structures. And so these, these structures uh, form by processes occurring on Earth, so kind of uniformitarianism, uh, either in stream beds or in avalanches, something that will tell us which way is down and which way is up. And the first one I want to talk about here are these cross beddings. So cross bedding basically occurs by this movement of a dune. So you can have big cross beds or short cross beds. But what happens as a current is blowing here or water is moving this way, you'll have erosion on this backside and you'll see deposition on this front side. So over time, you'll start seeing layers of sediment that look like this, right? And so the and one thing that's unique is that the the bottom here is is tangential. It, it, it approaches the bottom like a tangent. So it slopes down to this bottom here, slopes down. But the top here, because now over time we're going to see another layer of cross beds up here that'll form more erosion. So the top of, of this bed here, the top is is tr truncated. In other words, it's 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 uh, eroded off, truncated. So the bottoms of the cross beds show a tangential approach. The tops are truncated. So in my little picture here, I see the little cross beds coming down here, approaching the bottom, but their tops are cut off here. Tops are cut off. Now another important structure that I talk about are these graded beds, and I mentioned these with the turbidites, right? And so whenever there's a high to low energy environment, the coarser particles will always settle down first, finer ones in the top. So here in my sequence, I see coarser particles in the bottom, finer on the top. So those are two structures we can use to tell us information as to whether this unit has been overturned or not. So anyhow, that's the principle of superposition. Now this next principle is the principle of original horizontality. And so ideally, sediment deposited in water, like this here, should be horizontal. So if the strata is now tilted at an angle, we can suspect that some event has caused that tectonic tilting. Now, um, strata deposited in water, horizontal, right? If strata is tilted, must be older than horizontal strata. So here I have a, a hypothetical canyon. So if you're standing in this canyon, you're looking at rocks on one side and they're steeply tilted, whereas rocks on the other side are horizontal, you know that these rocks must be older because uh, some event has tilted these and has not affected these other rocks over here. In fact, if we go back to our marine headlands, right, we see that these strata are very tilted, right? At one point they were horizontal, so they're older. In fact, I have these same students here um, lying on the bedding plane now, <laughs> so they're tilting as the bedding was originally horizontal. Now, um, let's look at the next principle, which is the principle of cross-cutting relations. In this case, we're seeing uh, a, a younger unit that's going to cut across the older one. So here we have some strata, and the strata are faulted. So the fault is younger than the strata. In fact, if we did a little geologic uh, a history for this diagram, this is the oldest at number one. This would be number two, this strata will, strata will be four, three and four. And then the youngest unit would be this number five. So there's five events that happen here. This unit, this unit, this unit, this unit, and then finally the faulting. Now, another example, if we have an igneous intrusion, intruding country rock, for example, the intrusion will be younger than the country rock. So there's a couple of examples for cross cut relations. In fact, if we look at the PowerPoint, I have a couple more in here. So in this case, for cross-cutting relations, we'll see um, uh, this granite intruding the country rock, right? And here we have a little quartz vein intruding this red granite. And then you can see there's little faults that have cut across that quartz vein. So the faulting would be younger than the quartz vein, and the quartz vein would be younger than this granite host rock here. So that's an example of cross-cutting relationships. Now, Inclusions, the inclusion will be older than the host. In fact, this same picture shows uh, inclusions here. In fact, if we look at this one here, um, inclusion, sometimes they call it xenolith. So xeno, X-E-N-O, means foreign, so a foreign stone. And so here there are, there are inclusions or xenoliths of the country rock inside the granite.
right? So the country rock is older than the granite. Here's a xenolith of a, of a more mafic rock inside this red granite. So this would be an inclusion which would be older than the host. So the host has picked it up. Now, in terms of fossil succession, here there are three points to make note is that we know life has changed on Earth through time. There's been a systematic change uh, of species through time. And remember, remember that fossils represent remains of once living organisms. Uh, and third is, once a species goes extinct, extinction is forever. We really, no, no matter what Hollywood will, will tell you, we really, we really can't bring back these species. Now, uh, as an example, here I have some trilobites in, the, in this Paleozoic uh, era in the Cambrian period or division. So when you find fossils like these, you know they're going to be older than fossils like these. The trilobites will be di different. Uh, the species do change through time. And these little um, spans here are the, the ranges. So each individual species would have an age range where it first becomes uh, a fossil in the fossil record and then where it goes extinct as a group. Right. So these are the ranges. And if you can overlap ranges with different fossils, you can get a better correlation of the ages. All right, well, let's stop here for now.